Well, g'day and welcome to the channel. 2022 has come to an end and boy, what a year it's been. Wildlife photography has been especially kind to me and I hope it's been kind to you. I've captured many beautiful photos that I'll remember forever. And that's the beauty of our hobby is just the joy that it brings us. Now this joy wouldn't be possible without the tools of the trade. What are those tools? Well, they're the cameras and lenses that enable us to take these photos. So for just a bit of fun, I'm gonna give out some awards for the best cameras and lenses that are available or that we've used in 2022 that have brought us so much joy. Now, this is completely subjective. It's just a bit of fun. It's based on my own personal use of this gear. And I did a poll, which over 600 people actually participated in to give us an idea of what our community believes are the best cameras and lenses. I'm gonna be sharing lots of different photos from myself, my subscribers, and some of my mates just to celebrate the photos we took in 2022. And lastly, thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. You might be wondering why I'm taking on sponsorships. It's because I use every single cent I get from that to purchase gear, and 2023 is gonna be exciting. I'm predominantly a Canon shooter, however next year I'm definitely going to be trying Sony, Olympus, Nikon and hopefully Fuji, so I can't wait for that. Let's start the 2022 Wildlife Camera and Lens Awards with the best new wildlife camera released in 2022. This was a pretty tough competition because we were lucky to get a number of good cameras this year. I want to pay a special thanks to Fuji and Olympus who released two amazing cameras in the OM-1 and the X-H2S. These two cameras are packed full of specs, stack sensors, high frames per second, just awesome cameras. And it really was going to put the pressure on those big three of Canon, Nikon and Sony. Be aware, these other brands are coming and you need to match them. However, for me, it's probably a two horse race between the Canon R7 and the Canon R6 Mark II. Both these cameras are just fantastic for wildlife and I had a lot of fun using them this year. The R6 Mark II is the better camera. It's got 40 frames per second, and an updated autofocus is just out of this world fantastic. And it's definitely a front runner. However, the award has to go to the Canon R7. Why has this won the award? Well, for its price, it's unbeatable. It's without competition. It's $14.99 retail US, and there's no other camera that even comes close. It has 30 frames per second. It has amazing eye tracking autofocus, 32.5 megapixels APS-C, which is great for wildlife. So what's crazy is these specs were only found on pro level bodies not that long ago. And now hundreds or even thousands of you have this camera and you are enjoying wildlife photography. And that just brings a smile to my face. I'm so happy that so many people are getting to enjoy the benefits of these great cameras. And one of the photos from one of my subscribers that demonstrates this perfectly is this image of a sacred kingfisher from Cam. This just has the perfect balance of subject and habitat, and this was taken on the R7, so well done Cam. And when I reflect on my own usage of this camera, I took lots of photos, but the one that I remember fondly was this action shot of a pair of brown falcons. The ability to shoot in 30 frames per second, great autofocus, and that extra reach enabled me to capture this shot. I'm very, very happy with it. So as I mentioned earlier, I did conduct a poll, so let's have a look at the viewer results. And the viewers have obviously gone for the Canon R7 with 40% of the vote. I need to stress that these polls are not very accurate because it's very Canon heavy or has a strong Canon bias because I shoot with Canon, hence most of my members and subscribers shoot Canon also. Just be aware of that. So the next award is the King of the Castle Award. That is what is the best wildlife camera that money can buy in 2022. Now all of the brands have a flagship camera, well, all of them except for Canon have a mirrorless flagship camera and it makes this a little bit difficult. But for me, it sort of comes down to three bodies. That is the Nikon Z9, the Sony A1 and the Canon R3. Those are our pro level full frame cameras offering stack sensors, high frames per second, class leading autofocus. They're just beautiful cameras to use. Now for me, the Canon R3 is the best feeling camera because I'm familiar with Canon. However, it has that 24 megapixel sensor, which is still really good, but I don't think it competes with those high megapixel sensors from Nikon and Sony. If it had one of those sensors, it would probably be winning this award. But because of that, I think it comes down to the A1 and the Z9. Now I haven't used the Z9, but many of my friends have, and they just rave about it. They love it. I know many of you have it. And my good mate Gerard uses this camera and he shared with me a bird that's actually really tough to photograph. And that is the very unique inland dotterel. So this is a shorebird that lives in the desert. And I just love how this shot looks. Absolutely excellent quality. 
and I can't wait to get my hands on that camera in the future. Now the other one, the A1, I have had the pleasure of using the Sony A1 and it blew my mind. It's just a beautiful camera to use. It's frames per second, it's autofocus, everything's excellent. And the lenses of course with the Sony are good as well. The next shot demonstrates the power of these pro level bodies is this flight shot of a Cape Baron goose just taking off. I was able to just rattle off a heap of shots and everyone was in focus and it was just excellent. Now, because I haven't used the Z9, I actually can't really pick a winner here. They're almost tied for top spot. So I'm actually gonna go with the viewer's poll. Whichever one of those, the Sony or the Nikon, got more viewer's polls is gonna be the winner of this award. So have a, let's have a look at what the viewers decided. Now, when we have a look, <laughs> it's a bit of a surprise. They actually chose the Canon R5. That's the, the Canon force is strong there. Um, that is a good camera, but I think it's not quite as good as the Z9 and A1. So let's have a look what was the next one, and it was the Sony A1. So the Sony A1's just pipped the Nikon there, and therefore it's the winner of the King of the Castle Award in 2022. Pretty incredible considering that camera's almost two years old. All right, the next award is the oldie but a goodie award. That is, what's the best camera that's older than 10 years old? I think it's important that we acknowledge that there's lots of good cameras under $1,000 that are secondhand that enable us to enjoy wildlife photography. Now, I did an entire video on affordable gear for 2023 that you could check out. And I just want to share a shot that was taken on an old 7D, which is a really old camera now by Imra Gal of a beautiful morning scene of some water birds. This shot is just stunning and shows what can be captured with affordable gear. Now there's a clear winner in this category and it's the camera that brings a smile to my face whenever I use it. Which one is it? But it has to be the original Canon 1DX. I just love this camera. Kookaburra loves it too by the sounds of it. <laughs> All right. But just be aware that the sound of this camera is gonna wake up the neighborhood. So just have a listen to it. <laughs> Makes me smile though. It offers us 10 frames per second, 18 megapixels, really good um, autofocus. It's extremely well built. It's a professional body. You just can't go wrong with this old camera. It's just fantastic. I did actually manage to take it out a couple of times this year, captured this black fronted Dottrell, which just has amazing detail. And I was very happy with that. And when we look at the poll results, I was happy to see that everybody agreed with me that the Canon 1DX was the winner in this regard. Now, I also reserved the right to give an award to the camera that started it all. And that camera for me was the 40D. This is a 10 megapixel body that's, I don't know what it is, 15 years old now, probably worth $50. I still use this camera. I still go out at least once or twice a year, capture these crested pigeons this year. Great detail and shows you what's possible from such an old camera. Let me know in the comments what camera started it all from you. I'd be really interested to hear. So one last award for older cameras, and that is what is the most popular DSLR for wildlife photography? I asked my subscribers and the camera that came back as the most popular was the Nikon D500. That is a very worthy winner of that award because it's a fantastic camera. They got the blend exactly perfectly right. It had great frames per second. It had great autofocus. The buffer was awesome for an APS-C. We had that extra reach. Overall, just a wonderful camera. And I remember distinctly, I had the 7D2 and my good mate Gerard had the D500. We were photographing some peregrine falcons and he was just nailing it shot after shot, whereas I was struggling. And this is the shot he was able to capture on the D500, which was a great reflection of the day that we had with that bird. Okay, so the next award is the best all-rounder award. What camera can do it all? What camera can do wildlife? Can it do portraits? Can it do landscapes? Can it do video? Which camera is best suited for everything? And there's quite a few cameras in that fit this criteria. And on the screen here, you can see all those leading cameras from Sony, Nikon, Olympus, Fuji, and of course, Canon. So for me with Canon, they're pretty hard to beat, to be fair. The R5 with its 20 frames per second, the R6 Mark II with its 40 frames per second. They've got really good tracking with the eye autofocus. The, the buffer's fine, the pretty low rolling shutter. But video, they work very well also. The IBIS between the camera and the lens is just excellent. You can handhold video, no problem whatsoever. Now the Fuji and the Olympus also offer a lot of great features with their stack sensors and all these other things. But I just feel that for the all-rounder market, the full frame is just slightly better in regards to noise and dynamic range and things like that. When we think about those Sony cameras and the Nikon, I love the sensors on those cameras. However, I'm just a little bit concerned about the rolling shutter that we get and the lack of FPS on those cameras. So for me, it comes down to the R6 Mark II and the R5, and I think the winner has to be the R5. It's 45 megapixels, just sort of 
bump it up into that next category, that extra resolution is great for landscapes, great for wildlife, allows you to crop a bit further. And it's crazy to think that they're even considering updating this camera, considering how good the current model is. So if we get a Mark II next year, boy, that's gonna be something else. But for now, the R5 is my winner for the best all-rounder camera. And it looks like my viewers agreed with me in this regard, getting over 40% of the vote. So the next award, it's a bit of a funny one, is the most overpriced camera in 2022. This, of course, is entirely subjective. However, there's a few cameras that I don't think people should be spending huge amounts of money on. So the first camera I want to mention is actually sold by Canon, and that's the 5D Mark IV. I'm not sure why I still have this. I do need to sell it. However, they're still selling this brand new. It's six years old for two and a half thousand US. It's just ridiculous. Yes, the sensor's nice on this, but when you compare the specs of this to the R6 Mark II, which cost the same, there is no comparison. I'm not sure why they're even still selling it. So for me, this is a heavily overpriced camera. Now I did take some wonderful shots on the 5D Mark IV, including this sacred kingfisher with a massive spider in its mouth. So it is a good secondhand camera. I just wouldn't be buying it brand new, that's for sure. The other slightly embarrassing thing is that Canon are still selling the 1DX Mark III as their flagship camera. To be selling a DSLR as flagship in 2022 is a hard sort of thing to swallow. It's six and a half thousand US. It's $1,000 more than the Z9. It's $500 more than the R3. I think that camera was actually released just a little bit too late. They kind of released it right on the cusp of mirrorless taking over. It probably needed to be released in 2018, not be selling it in 2022. <laughs> so the third camera I want to mention is the Sony A9 Mark II. It's still a great camera. It's got a stack sensor, great autofocus, and they're asking, what is it, four and a half thousand US. That's a lot of money for such an old camera. We're obviously on the verge of an update, so I wouldn't be buying that camera. Camera, that's for sure. I did take some nice shots such as the Scarlet Robin. However, I think today you're better off holding off or buying a different type of camera. So ultimately the award has to go to the 1DX Mark III. Asking six and a half thousand US or 11,000 Australian for a DSLR is just a bit of a stretch. All right, so those camera awards were fun. It's now time to move over to the lenses. The first lens is the Budget Lens Award. What lens can we buy for under $1,000 US and still take wonderful shots? There's a number of lenses, which is great for us as consumers. However, there's two lenses that stand out above all else. The first one is the Canon RF 100 to 400. In fact, this lens is only 499 US on sale. 400 millimeters is incredible. It's super sharp, it's super light, it's tiny, it's the perfect walk around lens and works extremely well with these bodies with autofocus, etc. Now, 400 millimeters on a full frame, it's just too short for small birds. It's great for bigger mammals, larger birds, sort of spiders, flowers, and all that sort of stuff. However, you will need a longer lens if you've got a full frame. On the R7, it's not too bad, but you may consider adding a 1.4 converter to this. That's what I did, enabled me to capture this Azure Kingfisher. I like using it with the 1.4 converter because it made it a 140 to 560 f11, so pretty slow but still a good range for us to use at such a good price. Now, the other lens is a lens that I've had a lot of experience with, and that is the Sigma 150 to 600. Shout out to Brian, who continually lets me use the lens. So thanks, Brian. As you would know, I've used that over and over. The sharpness of the lens is excellent. 600 millimeters at 6.3. I think it's 900 US brand new. It's unbeatable. So one of the most impressive shots I've seen taken with this lens was by my subscriber, Cyril, of this white rhino. I just love this image. It's just remarkable, showing what is possible from this lens. And one image that I took, which makes me smile, is this backlit shot of two kangaroos play fighting in the early morning light. It's incredible the quality you get for the price of this lens. However, and it's a big but, as you know, I've had some trouble with the autofocus on the mirrorless Canon bodies. And if you're considering the lens, I highly suggest you look at those videos. However, on a DSLR, it's absolutely perfect. And I know many of you are using it on your R7, your R5 without issues. So just do your research on that lens. What's disappointing for me is it's unlikely we're gonna get an updated version for the RF mount, which is a bit of a bummer because it would be an instant buy for many of us. And it's definitely a worthy winner of the best budget lens under $1,000 is the Sigma 150 to 600. All right, the next award is the best mid-range lens. What is the very best lens that we can get for wildlife photography for say between one and 4,000 US? So quite a lot of money, but there are a lot of excellent options here which offer amazing image quality. I'm actually pretty happy to see that Fuji have entered this market with a 150 to 600 F8. 
I sort of wish we had one of those in Canon. So that's a great one at a great price, a great weight. Nikon obviously lead the way. PF lenses, the 505.6, the 400 4.5. I love that they're creating those light prime lenses. Excellent for wildlife photography. Sony, obviously that 200 to 600 is fantastic. However, there's one lens and this was a clear winner with the viewers. That is the Canon RF 100 to 500 7.1, the lens I have here. It is one of the best lenses I have ever used. It's so sharp. It's super light. I think it's only 1.2, 1.3 kilos or three pounds. Gives you 500 millimeters. It's IBIS is fantastic. Bird in flight, hand holding, walking around. It's hard to beat. One major advantage of the zoom range of 100 to 500 is 100 is actually a lot wider than 150 or 200. And it gives you a lot of flexibility in creating these wonderful habitat shots, such as this pitta taken by my good mate Jan in the rainforests of Queensland. Yes, it's a little bit short at 500, especially on a full frame. You, on the R7, it's almost perfect. Gives you that 800 millimeter field of view. It's got a few shortcomings, but overall it's a fantastic lens. I think the biggest hurdle is the price. I think it's almost 3,000 US, which makes it almost 5,000 Australian. So it's out of the league of most people, but if you can afford it and you shoot the RF mount, you're not gonna be disappointed with this lens. Okay, so the next award is our pound for pound superstar. Which lens strikes the perfect balance between image quality and price? What offers us lots of focal length, nice and fast, not too heavy, great quality. For me, there's only one lens and that's the Sony 200 to 600. Sony have hit that out of the park. I don't know why it's only 2000 US considering how good it is. This lens also takes a converter extremely well, which gives you a what, a 280 to 840 F9 lens. I used that combination and it enabled me to get my best ever shots with an Australian shell duck. These birds are notoriously difficult to photograph on the east coast here, and I got this shot very, very happy with it. I think what highlights how good this lens is, is the fact that in our poll, even though it's Canon heavy, it was by far the most popular. Sony stood out, and the reason is, as Canon users, we all want that lens. We all wish we had access to it, but at the moment, Canon don't make it. So what are we gonna do as Canon users? Well, there's only one thing to do and that's to buy the lens. <laughs> I've bought it, I've bought the Sony 200 to 600. I couldn't resist any longer, I've purchased it. I obviously need a Sony body to use it, but I can't wait to use this in 2023 and share that with you. So bring on 2023. As I mentioned, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you're not aware, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes covering topics such as photography and filmmaking, making it a great place to get inspired and learn new skills in 2023. As the new year approaches, I really want my own studio in my tiny little house that I have. So I've gone onto Skillshare, I've looked up YouTube channel, starting YouTube channels, and I spotted this video by popular YouTuber Ali Abdal, and he actually goes into detail about how to set up your own little studio with the lighting, with the audio, with your backgrounds, and I found it extremely helpful, and it's enabled me to build my studio, which I'll be using next year. So maybe you've been thinking about starting a new hobby or starting YouTube in 2023. Skillshare are actually offering the first thousand people free one month trial. So the link in the description gives you unlimited access to all their classes, ad free, which will Give you a head start in 2023. Now we can't forget about the secondhand lenses. They play an extremely important part for people starting out in wildlife photography and you can get a lot of lenses at a very affordable price. Again, you can refer to that video I did which includes a lot of cheap lenses and which are the best ones. For me, it's probably a lot more Nikon and uh, Canon lenses. For Nikon, their 200 to 500 is very good, but their 300 f4 lens for its price offers really good value. Shirley Ann shared this shot of a New Zealand rock wren actually taken on the old Nikon D7000. Blown away with the detail in this shot, absolutely love it. For me on Canon, obviously you've got the 100 to 400, but for me, this won't come as any surprise to any of you, the Canon 400 5.6. This is probably the sharpest lens you can get for its price, it lacks IS, which is a bit of a bummer. However, it is so sharp, it changed my world when I started using this on a 40D or a 7D. So for me, the award for the best old lens or the oldie lens is, has to be the Canon 400 5.6. And believe it or not, I actually whacked a 1.4 converter on this, giving us 560 F8. I used it on the R7, took probably my favorite image of the year, which was this silhouette of these cormorants. Absolutely loved that shot. And that was taken on this really old lens. All right, so we're gonna go from the cheapest lenses to the most expensive lenses. Which lens can you buy where money is no object? Which lens offers us the ultimate in image quality? It has to be our big super telephoto lenses, like our prime lenses. Canon took it a bit too literally when they released the 
RF 1200 F8. I think that retails for 20,000 US dollars. I looked it up in Australia, believe it or not, we have to pay 33,600 for a lens, which is just mind blowing. And a bit crazy considering you can get a 600 F4 and a two times converter for around six and a half thousand less. I think those 600s are often the sweet point, the 600 F4, and obviously Canon, Nikon, and Sony all offer 600 F4s, but I just wanna pay special attention to Nikon for a second. They are absolutely smashing it. I love the lenses that they are producing. Their PF range is fantastic. Their 400 4.5, their 800 6.3, and of course their older 500 5.6, all fantastic for wildlife. However, Nikon have gone and beaten all the competition when they released their 400 2.8 and their 600 F4. What makes those special is the built-in 1.4 teleconverters. For wildlife, that is incredible. The ability to just flick a switch and go from say 600 F4 to 845.6 is out of this world. Now I watched Steve Perry's review of that Nikon lens. He's a great YouTuber. Kindly shared some footage and this fantastic flight shot of I think a rosette spoonbill. A lot more colorful than the spoonbills we get down here. Thanks for that, Stu. Now it's not just Nikon that are doing the teleconverters. We do have to give a bit of credit to Olympus. They released that 150 to 400 Pro with a built-in 1.25 converter. That's a beautiful lens. I hope to use that next year. Uh, but for me, it has to be the Nikon 600 F4 with the built-in teleconverter. It's just the best that money can buy. I wish we had that for Canon, but at the moment, Nikon, well done. You've got the best lens. Well, that brings the 2022 Wildlife Camera and Lens Awards to an end. I love doing these videos because it helps me reflect on just how lucky we are to enjoy this hobby. I get so much joy from this passion of ours that I love sharing it with you. And the fact we have these amazing cameras and lenses to do it, I think we're living in the best possible time for wildlife photography without a shadow of a doubt. Now, I'd love to hear from you what your favorite cameras and lenses were in 2022. Jump down into the comment section, leave your comment, comment on other people. Let's get a nice conversation going there. So if you like this video, obviously give it that thumbs up. Subscribe if you wanna see more of these videos. Big shout out to my members. Those are the ones with the cool little birds to their next to the name, custom bird emojis. I have got some updates coming to my membership next year. Stay tuned for that. But until the next video, happy birding, take care and see you later.